Buckle up, ladies and gentlemen. Do you have any idea what time it is? It's time for We Gotta Talk, damn it. All right, there we go. All right, all right, all right, all right. Hello and welcome to We Gotta Talk, damn it. A podcast where common sense and logic rule. I'm your host, Freddie Mac, like a like a lack attack. But you can call me Freddie Mac. <laughs> so today is an easy podcast for me. I mean, this is just, it goes to the core of common sense. It really does. So we're going to talk about how to stop a global warming denier in their tracks. How to literally get them to scratch their head and go, whoa, what did you just say? That kind of makes sense. So how, how to do that? So but before we do that, let's talk about We Gotta Talk, Damn It, and how I can get you on this show because it is it is an interview-based show. So if you want to come on the show and talk about a product, a cause, a charity, uh, a, a business that you have, a product that you want to promote, or talk about previous podcasts, or you have a uh, you know, a subject in mind that you want to talk about, maybe political, maybe not political, um, you know, or you want to come on and, and refute what I'm, what I'm going to say here today. That's fine. Come on down. Let's talk. Let's talk. Prove Freddie Mac wrong. I mean, it's going to be impossible, but we could try. <laughs> Love it. Okay. So this is, yeah, this is going to be a real, real simple one. But, uh, so for more information, all you have to do is go to www.wegotatalkdammit.com and um, sign up for uh, email correspondence of upcoming episodes, etc., and stuff like that. And you could also let me know what you want to talk about. Or you can directly email me at freddy at wegotatalkdammit.com. And don't add the at in front of freddy, but yeah. It's just Freddy with a Y, not I-E, Freddy with a Y at we got to talk it dot com. And I will get that email and then we can get talking, 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 talking. So and, you know, I, I really want to make this a healthy debate. Right. Um, you know, podcasts. I mean, you know, the, a lot of things got heated on the Freddie Mac show, which I used to host and. Uh, you know, it's, and, and you know, you find, you find in time, you grow up and you say, you know, sometimes yelling and name calling doesn't always work. I mean, unless you're talking about the orange vermin and that's a whole nother topic, but <laughs> I love it. Uh, this podcast though, you're not going to hear a lot of stats from me and, and here's why. Okay. Because uh, you don't need a lot of stats. All you need, all you need is a little common sense. So, but the little stats that I'm going to give out are this. Okay, we know for a fact that sea levels are rising. We know for a fact that that temperatures are rising every single year. We know this. We know for a fact that 99% of all scientists agree that global warming does exist. So why the deniers out there? Well, it's become political, right? Oh, they just they want to do this. They want to take your money, Green New Deal, and blah blah blah. They make it political. Even the Democrats make it political, right? They they do because they make it seem, oh, we're all gonna die tomorrow if we don't do something about it. I don't know. They may be right. I don't know. I I, I can't say with hundred percent certainty that we're at the point of no return. I don't even think scientists know that yet. But what scientists know for with one hundred percent certainty is that humans are actually impacting our environment in a negative way. We, we just know that for a fact. And if you disagree with that, then you don't believe in science. I mean, it's just, it's not an agenda. Science doesn't have an agenda. So I, I don't, I, I, when I heard this before. It's like, oh, yeah, scientist has an agenda. NASA has an agenda. What agenda is that? To explore? To find out where we came from and to find out how the origins of the, uh, 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 of the universe? I, I, I don't, I don't understand that. I, I, I don't understand that theory of that science has an agenda. So I, I, that, that's mind boggling to me. I don't know what the agenda is to go to the moon or to, you know, explore Jupiter or Mars or the universes beyond. I, I don't know what that, what, what the political agenda would be on, on that one or uh, scientific agenda, if you will. I don't under, I don't quite understand that. So, but we know that, um, you know, we have uh, rising temperatures, rising sea levels. Uh, we, we, just, we just know this for an absolute fact. So in my experience as a landscaper, <laughs> boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, the, it, it, if the last two years are not an indication of what's going on, even the last three years, 
I mean, summers, summers are starting much earlier now. We don't even have a spring. I mean, we had the hottest spring ever this year here in the Midwest in Michigan. I mean, we, we, we just had our first frost the other day, uh, and we're already in November. Temperatures next week are going to be way above normal. And again, people, oh, this is just, you know, it's cyclical and, you know, the earth does its thing and stuff. I get it. I get it. I get it. I, I, I understand that concept. And yes, at one time, the, the earth was uh, um, uninhabitable. You, you couldn't live here. It, nobody could live. I mean, there weren't any life form. Well, they are discovering that life form can exist in a very extreme conditions, cold and, and hot. They are, they are, they are absolutely, scientists are absolutely discovering, discovering that. So I, I get it. At one point, we weren't, you couldn't live on the earth as a human being. It just was, um, you know, very violent earth, right? And then through billions of years, we've evolved to this, okay? And, and, and I get it. Some said, well, at one time, you know, we didn't even have an atmosphere. So it's cyclical. I said, yeah, I understand that. But understand, <laughs> cancer rates are going up. Uh, I mean, since the Industrial Revolution, we have been polluting our air. This is common sense, and it leads to how to handle a global warming denier, and we'll get to that really, really quick. Um, it's just common sense. Look at the factories. Look at the cars. Look at the airplanes. Look at, and again, you know, the Green New Deal. We're going to get rid of this and get rid of Listen, we're never going to get rid of fossil fuels 100%. Never. But what's wrong with renewables? We got a, we got a, 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 a ball of fire 93 million miles away that gives us enormous amounts of energy. We got wind that's blowing that can give us enormous amounts of energy. I, I, I don't get it. You know, and now EVs are coming out you know, bigger than ever. And we're going to talk about that too. Well, you need coal to burn to make that. I understand that. What we're talking about is reducing reducing what what is what everybody makes it sound like we're just going to get rid of fossil fuel and we're never going to have heat in our houses and we're going to we're going we're gonna to live back in the caveman days oh my god chill bro chill bro chill 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 bro so um environment plays where we are affected there's no question about it that we are impacting our environment in a negative way we absolutely are. And scientists has proved this. I mean, they really have. They've gone back thousands of years, maybe even longer than that, with the with the uh, uh, going to the uh, Antarctica and doing those tubes, right? They can they can see the levels of ice and what's in those levels of ice and through carbon dating and et cetera, et cetera. They can figure out what the environment was like, you know, because, you know, rain falls, it collects all the chemicals and it it it, it freezes and they collect these tubes. Science, right? It's just like meteorology. How, how do meteorologists figure out the weather on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, they look at the past patterns and they put it all together. They put it on a computer. They got the Doppler. They got the pattern here. And they go, well, statistically, when this happened, you know, you know, 20 years ago, uh, this is what happened. And chances are, this is what's going to happen again if, you know, it lines up the way it lined up, you know, 20 years ago. So they make a prediction and they say, well, there's a 50% chance of rain. There's a 75% chance of, so this is where meteorologists get a bad rap, right? You walk out the door and all you hear is rain, but you don't look at the actual percentage, right? You don't look at what the percentage is. They're making a prediction. Okay. They're making a prediction of the chances of rain that day. And if they say 50% and it doesn't rain, you're going, they were wrong. They, were, they don't know what they're talking about. No. Actually, as meteorologists consider themselves scientists, they were spot on. There was a 50% chance of rain, and it didn't happen, which means they were spot on. Now, as, as a landscaper, if, you, if I see something that says 60% or better, chances are you will see it. Because Why? Because we're getting closer to 100. And I, in my history, I've never seen 100% where it didn't rain. I, I just, I've never seen it. I never seen it. If they say hundred percent, guess what? <laughs> it's a hundred percent chance you're going to see rain. Okay. So now, so don't, don't, don't be so hard on the meteorologists. They really actually do a very good job. And, and all their predictions are based on science calculations, uh, past patterns, et cetera. Okay. Um, now here, here's, here's a great thing. I was watching, um, a climate, uh, change committee and Republicans and Democrats were grilling um, and asking questions uh, to uh, four of the major uh, oil companies. I believe it was BP, Exxon, Shell, 
and, and Chevron. And three out of the four have, have said that they are going to reduce their production. Why? Because they actually admit it that they need to help out with reducing their carbon footprint. The, the oil companies are admitting this. And then Jim Jordan comes out and says, I can't believe you guys are giving them such a hard time. I want to thank every single one of them for heating our homes. What? I mean, this is the same narrative of they're going to take your guns away. Now they're going to take our heat away. <laughs> I freaking love it. I mean, you can't make this crap up. No one's talking about taking our heat away. Nobody's saying that fossil fuels are going to be 100% eliminated. Nobody. But what's wrong with exploring wind? What's wrong with exploring, you know, uh, uh, solar? What's wrong with that? I, I just don't get it because, yes, I understand you need coal and you need whatever you need to generate that energy and blah. I get it, but we're it, the 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 process is reducing, reducing what we are putting in the air. I get it. I, I get it. We're never going to get rid of fossil fuel. I get it. Well, maybe, I mean, maybe not in my lifetime, that's not going to happen. I, I get it. Okay. But what's wrong with reducing the effect, right? We do this every day in our homes, don't we? Right. We reduce the effect of wasting electricity by turning lights on. And so we don't have to spend money reducing. That's all. No, no big deal. Okay. So these oil companies are actually acknowledging that they are uh, the problem. And actually, to their credit, they are talking about um, do, absolutely doing something about it. Now, a few other things came up that they they wanted uh, the Democrats wanted them to admit to or to uh, be involved in, and they weren't ready to go there yet. But that that's a whole other topic. But it's a start. It's an absolute start. Okay. So, um, but the Republicans seem to think that this is all about taking our heat away, just like taking our guns away. God, sometimes I wonder, do they actually have a platform, or do they just like bitching about progress? <laughs> So anyway, um, yeah. Now, how to stop them in their tracks? Let's let's talk about this. And I know we talked about. Uh, uh, I, I love. I just. I, I I love it when people say science is a, is an agenda. I, I I just don't get that. <laughs> um, and you know, I mean, global warming has become very political, and I don't know why. I, I don't get it. even the Democrats politicize it right with this scare tactic that if we don't do something now, we're going to be dead in 10 years. Uh, and, and, and that I don't know. I, I don't know that. I, I really don't know that. I, I can say that humans are absolutely impacting our environment. There's no question about that. Um, but are we doom and gloom? Um, I don't know. Maybe 20 years, 100 years, 1000. I don't know. I don't even think science actually um, uh, knows that uh, for for with 100 uh, percent certainty. But I do know that this is this is not an agenda and it shouldn't be politicized. It just it really shouldn't be. But it is. Um, I, I, you know, it's really funny. I think that there's a lot of people out there who think that this is that this is science. OK, this is how science works. You know, they go out and they go, well, let's use meteorologists for an example. They go out, they look outside and they go, huh, it's pretty warm out here. Yeah, global warming, global warming exists. Yeah, because it's warm out today. No. They did data. They do experiments. It's like it's like they think that a science was. Like, yeah, there's there's absolutely you know all kinds of metal in that dirt right now. How do you know? I don't know. I just because I it makes sense. They would never do that. They would never do that. They would take a sample, look under a microscope. And go, oh yeah, there's nickel. There's copper. There's all there's zinc in here. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff in here. And then they can say with 100 percent certainty that that's what's in that dirt, right? Or back in the day when they didn't have sophisticated equipment, they go, well, there's something in there, but we're not sure what it is. And as the equipment got more sophisticated, okay, it shows the patterns of this. And they go, oh, well, we know what it is. You'll never find a scientist say we're 100% certain and then backtrack and say, well, we're only 50% certain. No. It's like black holes, right? You know, back in, I think, 80s or 90s, they were like, hmm, something fishy is going on out there. I, I, we think it might be what we want to call a black hole and, you know, light can escape, escape from it and blah, 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 blah. And now they know for a fact black holes absolutely exist. Of course, a lot of people might say, ah, it's a bunch of garbage. We don't really know what science is. Ha, <laughs> So what else, what else do we got here before we get to how to 
stop a global denier in their tracks. All right. I actually had somebody tell me one time, ah, the earth is an amazing thing. It, it, it repairs itself. And it does actually. The, the earth actually does repair itself. However, just like with anything that repairs itself, it, it, there is a demise. I mean, and the question is, we know for a fact that billions of years from now, the, the earth is, or the sun is going to get so big, it's going to swallow it up and, you know, the, the earth isn't even going to exist. Okay, but that's, so that's a bit extreme to worry about. But what about now, where we live right now? I mean, is it, you know, we really have to be concerned about how we are absolutely uh, affecting our environment. So let's talk about, but yeah, but the earth de definitely uh, can repair itself. But since the Industrial Revolution, everything that we've been pumping into the skies, into, uh, into, into our environment, I, I, I don't know. Sometimes when I, when, I, when I look at factories and I see the stuff that, that, that's being pumped out, I go to myself, how can anyone say that that's not affecting our environment or affecting us, our health? How, how is that possible? It, it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Um, and maybe, maybe they think that you can abuse the earth and it'll repair itself. No, you can't abuse anything and it'll repair itself, right? You abuse your body. You eat like crap. You drink like crap. Uh, you, you breathe in toxins every day from the, these factories. You've, you know, yeah, something bad might happen to you, right? Because you're not taking care of your body. So like, for example, myself, people go, you're 58? Um, well, good genetics plays a role. But I also take care of myself. I exercise. I eat properly, right? So I'm, I'm reducing the probability of me dying at a young age. I'm reducing it, okay? So anyway, here we go. How do we do it? This is how you do it. It's so simple. This is fantastic. Ola. You're going to love this. And try it, okay? Just try it. And if someone who says, oh, global warming doesn't exist. Okay, let's do this. How would you like it? Okay, friend calls you up. Ring, 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 ring. Come on over, Freddie. Let's have a talk, okay? Let's uh, let's sit down and chat. I haven't seen you in a while. Okay, okay, Bob, no problem. I'll be there. Yeah, I, I haven't seen you in a while either. But I only got a few minutes. You, you mind if I just come and say hi real quick? I got to go, yeah, no problem, Freddie. I just, I miss you, man. I want to come say hi to you. Okay, yeah, just come and say hi. Okay, so I pull up. I decide to leave my gas-guzzling truck running, right? My... Uh, you know, uh, big exhaust and you know, my F550 or whatever the hell it is. And I decide to leave it running and your, and your house windows are up, right? And you can actually smell the exhaust. You can smell it. And then I walk in the house. And let's just assume for a second that I'm a smoker. I'm not. And I light up a cigarette. Now, I can't help wondering, and I asked the person point blank, would you like that? They go, no, you're polluting my house. I, I, it stinks. I, I'm, ga I'm gagging here. Hello? Hello? So what's the difference between the environment in your house that I'm polluting? Yes, I, I, I get it. It's more concentrated. It's smaller. It's less subtle. I get it. But what's the difference between that and putting that out in our environment into our ozone layer, et cetera? What's the difference? Zero. Zero difference. The di well, actually, the only difference is, is that it's, it's, it's more subtle outside. You don't see it. You can't taste it. You can't hear it, right? But you hear that truck. You see that exhaust. You smell that exhaust. You smell that cigarette. You're inhaling the second hand, okay? Because it's more concentrated. But it's still happening outside of your home. Why can't we treat the outside of our home, this planet Earth, our, like our home as well. Oh my God, how many people do I see throwing garbage out the window? You know, stepping on their gas and black smoke. They, nobody cares anymore. Nobody cares anymore. So I hope, I, I really, truly, truly hope that it's not doom and gloom, okay? But we have to address it. We have to address it. And I'm telling you, I have said this to several people this analogy, and they scratched it. Well, you know, kind of, I, that's a very good point, Freddie. That's a very good, and I'm not trying to be, you know, look at me, beat my chest. You know, it's just common sense. Look what's going in the air. What's the difference between your global home and your home with four walls? What's the difference? There's no difference. All right, folks. 
Let me know what you think about that. I really would love to hear your opinion and what you think about my, my uh, how to handle a, a global warming denier. And every time I bring this up to somebody, it stops them in their tracks. So, all right, folks. So, so more for more information on We Gotta Talk Damn It, simply go to www.wegotatalkdammit.com. You can email me. Don't put at in front of Freddie, but at <laughs> Freddie, that's Freddie with a Y, Freddie at wegotatalkdammit.com. Or simply Google, we got to talk, damn it. And uh, all the podcast platforms will pop up, YouTube channel, Facebook, uh, et cetera. So, but I would love to have you on. If you want to uh, further this discussion some more, uh, you disagree with me, come on board. Yeah, we can do a in-studio. We can uh, elaborate a little bit more about what I said. Uh, or we can do Zoom if you are uh, if you are not local. I'm not big time yet where I can fly you out to my studio, but hopefully eventually. <laughs> All right, folks, thank you so much uh, for listening to the podcast. And thank you all so much for um, your past comments and everything on my uh, past podcast. I absolutely love it. I love you all. Thank you so much. We're going to we're going to keep doing this. We're going to keep fighting the fight and we're going to keep asking the questions. And uh, little, little, just little bit at a time, we're going to try to change the world and make this a better place to live in. So, all right, folks, thank you so much. Uh, have a great day. And remember, we got to talk. Damn it. Peace out. Thank you for listening to We Gotta Talk Damn It. For more information on the show, please go to www.wegotatalkdammit.com. Thanks for listening.